CPU coolers, we've all got them. Maybe you care about them, maybe you don't. But does this one have more than just looks? Let's find out. Hey everybody, welcome back to GTEC. And today we're taking a look at this Iceberg Thermal Ice Sleet X5 CPU cooler. And at first glance, you can tell this doesn't look like your standard run of the mill tower style heatsink. No, it's got this crazy light blue cyan colored geometric plastic shroud around the entire thing. The packaging of the CPU cooler seems pretty unassuming. It's a plain cardboard box with a couple promotional stickers and whatnot, plus the tech spec sheet on the back, but it's inside the box that is actually interesting. The Iceberg Thermal team clearly had some clever engineers design the inside of this box, because the whole thing practically unfolds and presents the cooler to you when you pull it out. If you've seen my Bifrost build, that system actually had a similar color scheme because it was based around that Iceberg Thermal CPU cooler. But enough about aesthetics, let's talk the physical build of this CPU cooler. Most of this plastic shroud is removable, except for the shroud around the fan. The fan is built into this kind of, you know, geometric design, so if you ever wanted to replace it, you'd have to get rid of the whole geometric stylization entirely. But speaking of the fan, it's 120 millimeters and it's a four pin PWM fan, plus it has a three pin ARGB header, so no weird proprietary RGB controllers. At the base of the cooler is a flat cold plate connected to five individual heat pipes, hence the X5 name. Iceberg Thermal also makes an X6, an X7, and an X9 CPU cooler with an appropriately scaling number of heat pipes. The X5 is compatible with pretty much every modern AMD and Intel CPU sockets going as far back as LGA775 and FM1, but the only sockets it's not compatible with are high-end desktop sockets, such as Intel's LGA3467 and AMD's Threadripper sockets. A minor note, however, is that I received this CPU cooler before the introduction of LGA1700, but Iceberg Thermal is currently working on producing replacement mounting hardware for the X5 and the X6 CPU coolers. And speaking of mounting the CPU cooler to sockets, I did not have a great time trying to mount this thing, let me tell you. The Ice Sleet X5 has what I would call the standard for mounting tower style CPU heat sinks nowadays. You put a backplate on the back of the motherboard, add some mounting hardware and add some brackets and then screw the cooler to the brackets. All is fine and dandy, right? Yes, I didn't have a problem with that, but what I did have a problem with is trying to screw the cooler to said brackets. You see, the X5 has a little bit of a sloped design to it, and what that means is that the fan is located a little farther back, allowing for much taller heat spreaders for your RAM. That's good, but what this means is that when trying to screw in the CPU cooler, there needs to be a hole punched through all of the fins to reach the screw underneath. And herein lies the problem. I went through a ton of screwdrivers trying to find one that would work here, but every screwdriver I tried came up short, and the one that was long enough had too large of a head to bite into the screw head. I ended up having to use this. This is just an L-shaped Allen key type screwdriver from a Noctua CPU cooler. So that's really my first gripe with this CPU cooler. Iceberg Thermal, please include the correct tools to actually be able to install your product. But you don't care about my lack of compatible screwdrivers. You wanna know how well this thing performs and if it performs as good as it looks. So I pitted this CPU cooler up against pretty much whatever CPU coolers I had lying around. <laughs> first up, is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition. The Hyper 212 lineup is tried and true and has been for well over a decade, serving thousands of people for cooling their CPUs at a low cost. Not to mention, you can find them for about 30 bucks on sale, making them a solid price to performance option. I also pitted the X5 up against the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2. It sits roughly in the same weight class as the Hyper 212, with a similar size heatsink and a 120 millimeter fan, and they're both rated for about 150 watt TDP compared to the X5's 160 watt TDP. And just for fun, I wanted to see what kind of performance ceiling I could hit with an air cooler, so I busted out a Noctua NHD15, one of the most flagship tier CPU coolers you can buy. So I threw all of these CPU coolers against two different wattage CPUs, three tests a piece for an idle, a gaming, and a low temperature test. And you can see all of the system specs of my test bench up on screen right now. Under a one hour idle test sitting at the desktop, we're averaging just 23 degrees Celsius. A couple random load spikes happen here and there, bringing the max temperature over 40 degrees, but we never saw anything higher than 42.6. 
Playing Doom Eternal had the CPU sit in the 40s for the minimum, max, and average temps throughout the entire duration, and with a Furmark CPU burner stress test to the CPU, over one hour the CPU idled at just 66.3 degrees, with a max of 68.9. So where does that put us in comparison to the three other coolers I mentioned? Well, of course the NHD15 comes out on top in every single test, but we honestly saw some of the closest results come out of the Hyper 212. That's not to say that the Pure Rock 2 performed any worse, honestly it's a matter of single digit differences here, and technically the Pure Rock 2 did the best of these three in the load tests. Something I wanted to cover is whether or not the plastic shroud around the heatsink actually helps temperatures at all. I mean, it'd make sense, right? With the shroud around the edges of the heatsink, the air would be forced to move entirely across the fins and out the back, instead of passively dissipating into your case. At least that's what this person on Amazon thinks. Honestly, the performance difference is negligible. Maybe 2 or 3 degrees at best? At least with the 5700G, the biggest delta between any two values is less than 8 degrees, as the max temperatures when idling. But random load spikes aren't uncommon and hardly represent a real issue. Switching over to the Core i7-10700K tells a different story. For one, my graphs have way more random spikes to them. But whether it's due to the ambient temperatures in my room or something, the 10700K idled highest under the ice sleet. Again, we're talking single digit differences, so I'm suspecting margin of error. At least in my testing, the cooler did best keeping the max temperatures lower for each test, possibly due to the fan speeds. That fan though, I don't know what it is, but the tone it makes when running is just… bad? Maybe it's just me, but it's got this certain sort of hum to it that's lower than what I'd expect from an air cooler, and it's not exactly quiet either. Take a listen. So, in conclusion, it's a CPU cooler. It does what it needs to do, about as well as I would expect it to do, you know? I will say, I dig the look of this CPU cooler. When I did my Bifrost build, all of the compliments I got on that build were about how cool and unique that the CPU cooler looked. That's kind of the idea that Iceberg Thermal is going for with a cooler like this. They want it to stand out. So as of today, May 31st, 2022, you can buy this CPU cooler on Amazon for $44.99. And that's not too bad, honestly. You can still buy Hyper 212s for about 45 bucks. I wouldn't recommend you buy them at that price, but if you're looking to spend about 45 bucks on a CPU cooler, this is a solid option, especially considering this cooler launched for 60. That's a 25% reduction in price, which honestly I think makes this cooler much more worth it. If you've got 45 bucks to spend on a CPU cooler, you like the looks of this one, don't really care about the sound of the fan, and you've got a long enough screwdriver, then I can totally recommend the Ice Sleet X5. But anyways, that's just about gonna do it for now. So if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you wanna see more stuff like this, make sure to get subbed down below. Don't forget to check out the GTEC Discord server, which I'll put in the description. And as always, have a good one. Honey, I'm a big